well. Before starting with the treatment, as usual, we will be cleaning the face, uh, disinfecting with once more a non-alcoholic disinfectant. Why non-alcoholic? Because we would like to minimize the risk of burn and as well burning sensation. Therefore, I put it already on the gauze. Of course, it's uh, not that super convenient to have alcohol in the face. Uh, make sure that you um, take in disinfectant which is um, able to decrease the skin as well because the lipids on the surface of the skin are as well able to take in significant uh, portion of the light. We will performing a um, full skin resurfacing but only as a very slight peeling. If you would like to see more and um, maybe as well more intense treatments let us know and we will be able to perform as soon as possible. After cleaning and waiting for approximately three minutes we have to make sure that the gentleman as well is not jeopardized by our light which we are emitting so that means this is super important even you cannot see the light you cannot see the laser itself always patient shelter and the same goggles for me. My recommendation is to start always in the edges with some test spots and that's what we are doing in the next moment. Before starting the treatment itself uh, it's always recommended and requested by law even um, to do the patient's consent of course and to do a test spot treatment and then test treatment maybe even before. We are talking about here about at least 10 minutes, but up to three days. Uh, we, of course, did the patient's consent in the first hand. Now we have applied some test spots, spots as you can see here. The test spots are visible, just only as little whitish ablated channels. There, there's something like a crit and why to do it like this why to do it like there um, it should be done in the treatment area itself but never in visually and sun exposed area that means in the center of the face everything medial is a no-go i start very often in the um, in the forehead in the edges of the forehead why because a patient can always um, after finishing this um, aesthetic area, uh, this aesthetic zone, um, reconsider and um, has the opportunity to give me a green light for the further areas or not. Well, let's come and see how the treatment is performed. How to define the parameters themselves. Once more, like uh, in the very uh, hand piece, the device is to be managed from up to down, from left to right. The opportunities we have here are C for cold, 10% coverage, W25 for 25% coverage and warm. E represents in mode of energy or expert, which goes a little deeper in ablation, but with a coverage as well of 10%. And there is N for neutral, which is a mixture of all the uh, before mentioned modes with 10 or 25%. What are the differences? Um, I will perform on this gentleman today in C10 treatment. C10 is <coughs> coming up with a very low fluence of 4 joules per centimeter squared. And this is more or less 13 micrometers of depth of ablation which is barely nothing 
this gives us um, the chance of treat him like in a lunchtime treatment because the downtime of this treatment is approximately 12 to 24 hours so that means the most of the treatments you will be performing is something like this uh, if you would like to have better effects drastic um, improvements you have to augment the fluence of course or change parameters the so-called c10 treatment will always come up with a short pulse of 100 microns which is considered to be cold and pain free and the repetition rate is zero we are talking about an in motion treatment the same applies to the w25 treatment which is a non-ablative fractional skin tightening treatments the same uh, level here only for joule the pulse here is 1000 microseconds which is one millisecond and we are as well rotating the handpiece while shooting on the fly um, conventional treatments are performed with e10 and with e10 you can be performing then later on the so-called stamping you have an impulse of four impulses each 10 joules makes it 40 joules in total and gives you a depth of ablation of approximately 170 micrometers which is pretty much the edge of the epidermis so we are touching here the basal layer if you would like to see um, to evaluate where you are and have you reached the layer just uh, look out for a little pinpoint bleeding once you would like to go dermal um, because once perforating the basal layer area of course you are hitting some uh, blood vessels as well and this gives you with all the patients the best orientation of course skin in here in terms of thickness is another thing like here the neck in terms of thickness is a totally different story than in the face and the same applies to the perioral than the periorbital so always uh, keep a sentence in mind one of my favorites skin doesn't lie skin always tells you what to do and where you are and what not to do let's get it done we decided in this case for a very short downtime and as previously mentioned my favorite is this device because of you can predict and you can anticipate downtime very very precisely lunchtime break and after this treatment he can continue working well we already started with some test spots in here you can see there's a slight redness popping up which is perfectly well if you have troubles in moving the articulated arm in the appropriate uh, position you might lift this little knob take with the other hand the arm and move it forward as long as you hear this click and then the position is much easier to manage and the arm much easier to use let's get it started we are starting in a circular motion here we go in this patient we haven't been using any kind of local anesthesia As you can see, I marked the edges of the first aesthetic unit 
uh, by just passing it by, I try to hide the treatment edges by um, sliding into the hair in here or below the mandibula over there. And then I'm going to fill it up As you can see, we just passed only once. We do have a crit. As you can see here, the crit is kind of homogeneous and it's just only one pass. I try to avoid multiple passing because this prolongs the wound healing and might lead to problems in the wound healing uh, differences. We are uh, working here in the aesthetic industry, that means as well the treatment shall be meeting some expectations of our own. Well, after the first aesthetic unit, I go over to the next one, which is the cheek. And here we go. Due to the fact that this uh, little pang you hear is um, determined by the evaporation of water, I just push it like this. And then once more, I mark the edges of my treatment area. And after that, I just fill it. Always a little stretch. That's for the second aesthetic unit. Third one. And we are almost done. Once again. Mark it. Mandibula nasolabialis. Periorbital. And later on, with a little stretch, that's it. So let's go for the perioral area. Uh, surely one of the most uh, sensitive areas at all. That's it. Well, last aesthetic unit is the periorbital zone and the perinasal zone. Um, as you can see, I have changed the goggles for some pads, and those pads are containing just water. Um, that means NACL, 0.9%. Uh, Why? This water will catch my laser light and will sufficiently save the eyes. Here we go. I went down a little bit with the speed. Put it like that. And lift it like this. Take the other area as well. Mm. 
lift it, change to the upper eyelid, finish the left area, and a final check of the skin. As you can see, there's a slight erythema coming up. What to do next? We are getting him something like a mask, a rehydrating mask. Why? <coughs> doesn't make sense to put any kind of uh, lipids. You are removing water by applying a CO2 or an erbium because this light is absorbed by water. So what uh, I do recommend always within the next 10 to 15 minutes afterwards to replace this water you have evaporized. Let's summarize what we have seen today. Um, it's a unique kind of box. This herbium uh, comes up with a lot of features. For example, the smoke evacuation, which is uh, unique in this kind of uh, devices, uh, as well all the different modes from non-ablative skin tightening, hot ablative CO2, laser tissue interaction and cold ablative erbium. We have different hand pieces, so for example the various spot, what we have seen, the micro spot, the fractional, what we have seen, all of them are able to deliver non-ablative, hot ablative and cold ablative pulses. Besides that, you have the opportunity to as well treat in the ENT and in the gynecological field with the so-called Romeo handpiece and Juliet. And besides that, there is some surgical upgrades. Um, so for example, the cut handpiece and so much more. For me, it's just only a working horse and um, one of its kind. Whatever your questions and requests are for more detailed information, just let us know. We are happy to come back to you. All the best. See you next time.